guys, I want to welcome you to the weekly Wednesday for the Financial Freedom Newsletter, where every week, every Wednesday, we delve into something inspirational, motivational, something excerpt taken from the Financial Freedom Weekly Newsletter. Wherever you are, if you're listening on Spotify, on iTunes, Google, be sure to click the like, subscribe, share, comment. Without ado, let's get into the show. Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom Podcast. And I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. I'm really excited about today's guest, Allison Graham. She's a keynote speaker, but in particular, she uses storytelling, inspiring, talks about burnout, how professionals can be burnout, the stress illusion. We're going to talk about um, on people that are unhappy with their work. Don't quit. Do this instead. And this can be a fascinating discussion on boundaries and we'll get right into it. So Allison, welcome. Thank you for having me. It's exciting to get to dive into this talk topic. Yeah, I, I love this. And like I said, I, I built this podcast, you know, kind of to get uh, as a ground for ideas, cross pollination, and a forum for people to, you know, get inspired, educated, join in on conversations. So tell people about your story and what you do, and we'll dive into it. Well, uh, like a lot of people who become keynote speakers or coaches and consultants, I, I like to suggest that my mess is my message. So. I was someone who burned out. I was, and probably like so many of your listeners, like that person who just loved an 18 hour workday. I didn't realize that maybe that wasn't sustainable. And uh, apparently it's not when you have a surgery and I ended up with post neuropath, um, post-surgical neuropathic damage. Mm. And that has now been, uh, we're coming up on 17 years uh, that I have had that, uh, that damage. But what I noticed was when, well, I noticed many things, but when my stress levels, when I, when they get so high and often like my clients will say to me, I feel like I'm suffocating. Like I have no room left in the day to breathe, to think, to do anything that matters to me. Right? Like I know that feeling. And when I get to that top level where I feel like I can't breathe or think and, and everything is just swirling around and I'm reacting then my neuropathic pain actually increases. And so while it's always there, still 17 years later, I I know that if I don't manage my destructive stress in a way that is not creating it, right, I actually will have a harder time dealing with my pain. Interesting. It kind of reminds me of um, kind of like, you know, people that they kind of know their triggers and their body responds and like, you know, could be like, you know, they're heart starts racing or you know the bones start aching or some you know some kind of area they the signals um which is uh quite interesting to learn you know your body's signals so one thing that's you know talking about is um, you turned your mess into your message which i which i really love um so a lot of the problem with burnout especially in the medical profession is that um you know they have to they're kind of chained to these they, they had a certain lifestyle their spouse kid you know all this stuff and then all of a sudden they see the healthcare system breaking down but they don't they can't they're trapped you know like just you know suffocating so you have this idea of unhappy with your work but don't quit do this instead i'm i'm really exactly. interested. and that that line that particular line came from a friend of mine who high up in a company but had a boss and that boss had very toxic behaviors and she was just so unhappy she's like i can't take it another day and she went to the competitors and she worked there and for a month she was blissfully calm and happy and then her old boss got recruited to be her new boss and she was in the exact same situation and so when it comes to our patterns in our relationship with stress and burnout and how we're perceiving all of the things that are going on around us Quitting and just ignoring them is not a good strategy, right? Like it just, there because our patterns stay with us even though the circumstances change. So if you have a really highly stressed, uh, you know, personality, 
and you're feeling like the sensation of, you know, I'm doing too much and I don't have boundaries and I'm saying yes when I wish I would have said no and not being able to effectively process your, your angst in your life. Whether you're working in a hospital setting, whether you're working in a clinic or whether you're working at, you know, for some office building downtown or working from your living room, you're going to repeat the same patterns. Circumstances will change, patterns will not unless you choose to proactively change them. Oh, I love I love that idea. Circumstances change, but patterns do not. Uh, so you have to proactively, I, I love that. Um, the other thing is, uh, so basically identifying the patterns and then changing your perceptions. Um, the other thing is talking about making friends with your chronic pain. You don't need to give up on your dreams. I expand upon that. So, and my pain is like, so my chronic neuropathic pain is, you know, I'm encouraging everybody to, you know, swap that with whatever your adversity is. What's the thing you need to deal with? Because not everybody has post-surgical neuropathic pain, right? Like it's just not, it's not that relatable. You know, do you have contentious relationships in your life? Are you... Uh, going through maybe somebody you love has a cancer diagnosis, right? Like it could be anything that is weighing heavily on you and can influence everything else. Because what I notice is that we'll have something going on in our lives. It's just part of the human experience. And it's really heavy emotionally. I'm not going to say negative emotionally because I think we need our negative emotions too. And maybe even physically or spiritually and mentally. And what happens if we're not disciplined with how we apply our emotion, okay? If we don't recognize what actually is happening, we will have that negativity infiltrate everything. So if I'm angry about my pain, yeah. I used to walk into a meeting and then I'd be irritated with people in a meeting. And I'd be like, but they didn't actually do anything if I was looking at it objectively. Uh -huh. But it's because I wasn't, able to figure out, oh, I'm really angry and fearful about my pain and overwhelmed by my own pain. And now I'm taking it out on these innocent bystanders, uh, you know, whether I would take it out legitimately or just internally, right? It's it's like we can walk in today uh, into work and imagine you've had a, a real off the rails kind of day. You know, those kind of days, right? Your kids don't wake up on time. You forgot you to charge your battery, right? If you uh, on your phone, uh, maybe if you're married, you've got your spouse is like all irritated with you. And, and it's like everybody's leaving the home late and then you get into a traffic jam and then you spill your coffee and then you get into the clinic and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm having the worst day. When in actual fact, what you're having is a whole series of little obstacles that when you combine them together feels really overwhelming. But when you look at them and deal with them each individually, nothing is a big deal. Mm, I love that. And kind of like what uh, the, the key idea, and I liked how you described um, discipline and how you apply your emotions and really get to the root of what's going on and owning that and not taking it out on like, you know, your dog or your friends or um, and then you can actually coexist with your uh, chronic pain. Yeah, I love exactly. that. And it's uh, one of the three tiers of what I believe creates destructive stress is the emotion that we put around the things we do, which is often misplaced. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. right? Like if you've seen this happen, it's like you're in a grocery store line and somebody goes off on the on the person, right? Like with like a, the cashier and then you're like, oh my goodness, like I'll get the sale price. It's okay. <laughs> right? But it was because they built up so much frustration throughout the day and weren't processing it effectively that it ended up coming out on somebody else. Mm. And I think that happens more and more these days because people are facing more and more challenges and not having the tools to actually process. Yeah. You, you you came up with this term called the, the stress illusion. What is that? Yeah, the stress illusion. It is my belief that as a society, we ha are fundamentally flawed in how we, what we think about stress, how we believe it's created, uh, we're meant to deal with it and the best way to manage it. And so my opinion is first and foremost foundational. If we create less stress, we don't have to be so good at managing it. 
to create less stress. I, and then uh, I love how you, in the previous response you were talking about how you deal with each individual obstacle individually, and it basically becomes a non-issue. And then what is personal capacity design? What is that? Well, okay, so personal capacity is, by the way, there are like 21 illusions. So I, I don't want to skip over that too much, but I, I just think that we're taught to manage it. And even things like people will say, and, and by the way, I'm sure so many of your doctors have told people this, so I love you and I say this with respect, uh, to do things like, you know, exercise and meditate and take time for yourself and, you know, have a good social circle. And I love that. That's great advice for a healthy lifestyle there are a lot of like burned out highly stressed executives working out at the gym <laughs> if it were the answer people who run marathons would not be stressed and some of my most high strung friends who i love dearly are marathon runners so we're taught as a society to do more behaviors right behavior uh -huh. have but if you're already suffocating and you're working a long shift and you haven't slept in days you going to the gym may be a great thing for you, or it may be the worst thing you can do. And so I'm like, okay, how do we shift? Like, like that's one of my fundamental pieces of the stress illusion is stop expecting behaviors that are designed to A, make you healthy, and B, to release stress hormones that are already created to stop making you feel stressed. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Like, do you see that? Yeah, yeah. So it's basically you're taking, basically, if you're already overloaded, don't add in things to make you more overloaded. Kind of reset it and uh, and first heal before you start taking on these other activities. Well, I'm all for going to the gym. Like, bring it on. If it works for you, do it. I'm not saying that. I'm saying don't expect working out to solve the fact that you're unhappy in your life and feeling like you're burning out. Yeah. I can't um, tell you the number of times I've started working with a new client, they come on the call and they're just like, oh my gosh, I know I should, and here are the shoulds, I should just let it go. Well, mm, you know, I can't focus on the things I can't control. Oh, yeah, but what are the things that really upset you the most? Probably the things you can't control. And I know I should go to the gym and exercise and I'd feel so much better and I wouldn't feel so stressed. And I'm like, actually, you would still feel exactly the same level of stress during the day. You would just now be healthier because you're actually exercising. Mm -hmm. The two are not mutually exclusive, but the two are should not be as tied into, in my opinion, as the medical community makes it out to be. So there's my controversial take. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, this podcast is more for a forum for, you know, people to you know, express their ideas. So, you know, as we come to this conclusion, um, how do you spend more time in your sweet spot of performance, productivity, personal, you know, pro 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 profitability? And, um, and then how can people contact you and, you know, follow you and check out your work? Sure. So uh, that sweet spot of performance, profitability, productivity, and personal fulfillment, I've said it many, many, many times, um, is uh, a bit of a tongue twister. But the idea there is if we create less destructive stress in our lives and we harness the power of good stress to get more done in less time and to feel more in flow, then we can, we can design our days. This is the personal capacity design to be more aligned with how we want to live our lives. Instead of just reacting to everybody, we have this perspective of going, okay, this is what's happening. This is what I want my days to look like. This is how I'm going to show up in the world. And we work and I have a whole problem solving framework and everything to help people get to this point. Like one of my clients, we just finished a six month program. He started with me, he was at 128% capacity. And so that can have a little bit of ambiguity to based on how you see it. But basically he was thinking about dealing with problems from work, 128% of his week. He was exhausted. We just finished six months and he is at 38%. And that only shifted because we got so intentional about how do you actually design your days? What, what parts need to come in? What parts need to go out? How are we going to change the emotional, the misplaced emotion and the storyline? And it's, it's a whole process. But uh, 
I really am on a mission to get people talking about stress differently. And I believe that as a society, we can have more people living in a state of flow if we can apply some of these concepts. So in terms of how to get more information, come on over to Allison and there's lots of resources there. We just launched a new website, but they'll, the blogs will all go back up soon. And, you know, of course, online courses and coaching and keynote speaking, if you're having a conference, like it's all there, but I know it can be done. And it's so beautiful when people stop spinning in the destructive stress cycle. Yeah, yeah I love that. And, um, Especially, you know, in our uh, really chaotic, especially, uh, you know, in our world today. So um, for the audience, let's thank Allison for coming on the podcast, um, dissecting some really interesting concepts and kind of creating metaphors around it and expanding on that. All of Allison's work will be in the links in the show notes. And with that, thanks so much for coming on to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Thanks for the platform. listening if you liked it be sure to like comment share subscribe we're on everywhere spotify itunes google amazon audible and without much ado be sure to thank this show's sponsors and we'll see you next